Hi and welcome to my new tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be showing how to import 3D objects into After Effects from Maya. For this we're going to be using three different types of software. We're going to be using After Effects, Photoshop and Maya. Uh, I'm using the latest version of all three of them but I'm sure it works on previous versions. So here's an example of what we're going to be making. Um, I'm sure you can find out your own uses for it, but this is going to be a quick example. Um, as you can see, we've got some 3D boxes inside After Effects, and we're using After Effects lighting in order to light the scene and get them around. As you can see, the lights interact with each other and the 3D layers interact with each other. So if we just play it, we can see how it basically is, and that was all done using After Effects with just one 3D model from Maya. Texture we're going to be using is the one on the right. You'll be able to locate a similar one from uh, Google. Just search for create textures or something like that and you can basically follow this tutorial. Okay, so we're going to be loading up Maya. Um, it's worth noting that we're using the 2011 version of it. Um, it's basically pretty much identical, but a few of the menus are a bit different and it's down dockable. Other than that, it's pretty similar to previous versions. Um, before we get started, it's worth going to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Plugin Manager and turn on obj export.mml. As you can see I've got it auto-loaded, uh, just make sure that's turned on. Um, that's how we're going to export. Okay, so if you go to File, we want to create a new project and we're going to name this uh, 3D Box After Effects. Um, we're going to be using, just press Use Default, that'll fill out all that, and just press Accept. Okay. Um, before we get started, go to Create Polygons and turn off Interactive Creation. It's also worth noting that I've got two quick shortcuts to the UV Texture Editor and the Hypershade menu. You can get to them uh, by going to the Window folder and the UV Texture Editor is there and the Hypershades inside the Rendering Editors. Okay, so first we're just going to bring in a cube, press W to move it up and press R to resize it. Um, we're going to turn on fill textures and also export textures. So that's now all we've made. Um, we need to export the UV map for this. Um, that basically means so that we can texture it using Photoshop. So if we go to our custom menu and load up the UV texture editor, again that's through Windows if you've not got it, just go down to the polygon menu, go to the bottom and just press UV snapshot. Um, inside here, change the resolution to something quite high. I've got it on 1024 by 1024, and we got anti alias turned on. Only thing to note in here make sure that your uh, image format is set to JPEG. Um, with that said, just press OK, and that just now exports the UV map. Um, so, if we just go to our desktop, and I go to the project menu. You'll find that this is located inside your My Documents folder. And you navigate to your 3D project in After Effects. In uh, Maya, you'll be able to find the uh, location of it inside Images, which is here. And um, that's the thing that we've just created using the UV Texture Editor. Um, and you'll want to get your holding images, so the Create Texture. And you'll want to copy and paste that into a folder in here called Source Images, just so you can keep reference of that. So you want to load up Photoshop at this point. While that's loading, we're going to bring you bringing in the um, Create Texture. Get a few seconds to load, and also we want to bring in the. Um, so I got the right window open. We want to be bringing in the UV uh, Texture Editor. So if we just navigate to it, which is located in Images, we've got the UV map, and as you see, it'll be there. I personally like to invert it, since I see it a bit easier to use, so I just use Control and I to invert the image. And then we have our texture, and we just simply bring it in. As you can see, with that resolution, it actually fits these squares perfectly. So, um, But you may have to resize it. If you need to resize, it's just uh, Control plus T and then you can just drag it out to whatever side of the box you need it to fit. Uh, I'm not going to be applying that. So, so basically all I'm going to do is just press Ctrl and J and duplicate this a few times. 
As you'll see, it'll auto snap to uh, the previous box, making it quite easy to fill this shape out. And then I need to rotate a few of them so that they don't look weird when they're in uh, side mirror. So every other shape that touches another shape needs to be a different um, rotation. So basically, two on the outside and the one in the middle. So with that done, it should look like that. And now we've got a shape. So we just want to uh, save this. So we just go File, Save As, save it as a JPEG. Um, we want to put it inside source images. Uh, again, this is your Maya folder source images. And we're just going to put, call this UV box. That simple. And just press save and make sure it's on the larger file. So, if we just minimize Photoshop for now, we'll see if we actually navigate to the source images folder. It's just in there with the previous crew. Okay, so as you can see, it's not affected this in any way as of yet. So we're going to go to the Hypershade menu. Again, that's through Windows Rendering Images Hypershade. And inside here, we're just going to create a new Lambert. We do this by simply pressing Lambert and middle mouse click and drag it onto your box. So if we double click this, you'll see that the panel to the right has changed. And we want to change the color, so we'll tick the checkered box to the right of the color wheel and choose file and now you'll see that the box has changed color and we just want to press the file again and it'll put us into the source images and we'll see that our UV box that we created inside the Maya folder is actually there. Let's press open and due to the way that the uh, UV texture was laid out it perfectly fits so if we just rotate around it you can see that box is exactly what we wanted it to be. Okay so now basically we're going to export this to a format that After Effects can read. To do that we just press the Hypershade menu. So we brought that back up and we basically select the box and hold in Shift and select the Lambert that we use. Go to the Edit window and go down and there would be one in here that says Convert to File Texture Brackets Maya Software. If we just press the square to the right of it we're going to want to do a few different things in here. We want to make sure that Anti-Alias is selected and on background mode we want to make sure that extend edge color is selected. We don't want to bake anything else and we just want to make sure that the only other tick box in here is fill texture scenes. With that said, uh, make sure your resolution is correct and your file format is set to JPEG. Um, by default it'll probably be on uh, Maya IRF, so just make sure it's selected to JPEG. Then we just press convert and close, give it a few seconds to think about it, and if we actually just go back to the um, Maya window source images, we'll see that there's a new file in there which looks like that. So that was the previous one, and that's the new one. And you just see it's just filling the edges so that we have no overlap. So from this point, we need to basically export this to a format that uh, After Effects can read. So we're going to be uh, exporting all, press the square again, and we're going to be using the, the uh, file type obj export and that was the same name as the plugin that we used and we just want to start that and make sure that all these are turned off except for materials if we now just press uh, export all we'll want to put it in a new folder on the desktop or somewhere where you know it's going to be it doesn't have to be in the Maya folders at this point I'm going to put it inside a uh, pre-made folder called 3D box and I'm just going to name this 3D Maya box and again, just confirm that only materials is selected here. Press export all. And that's it. We just save that. And, yep. So, we're not too bothered about using Maya again, so we can close it at this point. And if we navigate to the 3D box folder, we'll see we've now got these two new files in here, plus the uh, texture from previous. So, we need to load up Photoshop. And inside Photoshop, we just go File New, and we want to create a uh, film and video. Uh, with this, I'm just going to select a pre made set, one of these, and I'm going to be using uh, HDTV. So I'm going to be using uh, HDTV 1080p. Um, that's the same resolution as my monitor. So if I just press that, I'll pause to that. In here, we're going to be using the um, 
top bar and we'll navigate to one that says 3D. Once we've navigated to it, there'll be an option here called New Layer from 3D File. If we just press that and we navigate to our um, 3D box holder, we'll see that the uh, 3D Maya box that we just created in Maya is in there. Once we open it, we'll see that the box is imported. This isn't 2D, it's worth noting it's 3D. So if you just go down the left panel and there's this one that's keep camera rotate. Um, you can just rotate around the box and you'll see that it's actually true 3D. So um, yeah, basically that is the only format that we can get After Effects to read and load. So if we just go File, Save As, uh, it'll put it back in the 3D box, so if we just name this 3D Box PSD, Photoshop File, make sure that Les is selected, uh, we just press Save, give it a few seconds. So we don't need to use Photoshop anymore, so we can close that. And if we go back to our 3D box, we'll now see we've got this new PSD file. So at this point, we open After Effects. If we just give it a few seconds. Slow down my monitor, let's bring it across. Okay, so this is what you'll be greeted with with After Effects. Just, uh, we want to basically import the file we just created, so we'll go right-click inside the project window import file and we want to locate the 3d box.psd so at this point we want to make sure that composite is selected have that on that one and live photoshop 3d selected once we press ok we get a new composition which looks like this which is very similar to the one that we just created in photoshop the only thing that's worth noting is delete the background there and toggle on the 3D button. It'll give you a warning, but just don't worry about it. Okay, um, it's worth noting that this isn't actually true 3D, it's actually a two layer image and it's controlled by this second thing called 3D Maya controller. So if we need to rotate or anything inside here, we do it inside here. So if we just drag this out, you'll see that basically controls the rotation and everything else. So um, we're just going to keyframe them up and put a bit of rotation. So if we just select orientation, because that's the only one we're going to be dealing with. So if we do it actually right. If we go to uh, four seconds in, we'll change. We'll just quickly change all the um, aspects to let's say 300 for most of them. Change this last one to 50. So basically, if we just have a quick go through, you'll see that that rotates. And that's all we want for this preview. Okay, so now we want to make a new composite. So right click in here, new composition, settings are fine, that matches up with the um, uh, box that we've created if you look, X and Whipsel height. And then we'll just name this one uh, room. Okay, it's important at this point that we need to make a uh, room so that you can actually get a length of depth and see how the shadows deal with it. So we're just going to be making a few different solids. So if you right click in the bottom left window, go new, solid, and we'll just make a few different ones. So we'll name this one floor. So we'll use this one for the floor. Uh, as you can see, it's still 2D at this point. So if we want to make it a floor, we just go this. And we'll toggle on the 3D layer switch, which is this box here. We'll now see that it's actually singular. So we want it on the ground. Um, so if we just rotate around here and hold in shift, when it fills out in this screen, it means it's now flat. And uh, we're going to duplicate it. And then we'll call this one, if you just press enter, we'll call this back wall. It's worth noting if you press the floor, just to drag it down below the active camera. So if we drag that down to about here, so it just fills up that full length of that width. It's quite nice. So if we click the back wall, and we can toggle off floor for now since we know it's in place. Obviously this needs to be stood up. So again, if we just rotate this until the left screen can't see it, so it'll look like that. If we just want to drag it to the back of the composition, 